today. A very, very important topic. My name is Dr. David Ajibadi, and I'm here co-hosting with my friend and sister, Terry Platt. And we're talking to you today about this, which is really the second part of our, our webinar. First part was about two weeks ago where we talked about The broadcast is now starting. All attendees can now hear you. Uh, what was that? Okay. They hadn't heard a single thing we said. Oh, you're kidding. I, okay, you guys, we are so sorry. Um, those of you who are on the line <laughs> are, are probably just now hearing what we have been saying. Uh, we're, we're using a new system, and I thought all of you were able to hear everything David and I have been talking about for the last 10 minutes. Uh, oh my gosh! All right, uh, can someone <laughs> click? Um, can we have someone to say real quick if they heard us or not? Uh, you can just type it in. Yes. Didn't hear anything. Okay, we are so sorry. Oh yeah, we are. We really are. Okay. Well, I, I, I'm glad you were able to fix, figure that out. Okay. So um, I guess we're going to stop from the beginning. Well, well, we'll probably just send emails for the announcements later on. All right, well, let's begin. All right, um, the, today is about enhancing your, your body's ability to burn fat, and I'm here with my friend and sister, Sherry Platt. I'm Dr. David. Uh, we're going to continue what we spoke about last week, <coughs> uh, excuse me, two weeks ago, when we talked about, uh, again, your, enhancing your body's ability to burn fat, and the, the words were chosen carefully for that purpose. We weren't, we're not talking about, um, um, Losing five pounds in five days. We're not talking about uh, any of the other gimmicks that we use that are used on TV. We're talking about enabling your body. We're talking about your body knowing what it needs to do and giving your body the tools to do what it needs to do, so that uh, weight loss and fat loss are not only gained but um, but also maintained. Should it be the other way around? Weight loss and fat loss. Is, yeah, gained and maintained for the rest of your life. So it's uh, very, very important that you, we understand key principles. And here, here's where we're going to go on. We're going to do a quick recap. Again, there are lots of things that we have been taught about weight loss that, in the light of new information in these days, no. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Yeah, I just kept on going mute and unmute, mute and unmute just a minute ago. Okay, you're good. Okay. Uh, okay, so we must unlearn what we have learned in terms of, like, in terms of what we understand about weight loss and fat loss. So a few more things we're going to look at. Uh, again, it's about understanding, understanding stuff. What you do not understand, you cannot possess. You cannot possess or you cannot enjoy steady weight loss and a good healthy body weight if you don't understand the key principles, the fundamentals to uh, maintaining that fat loss and weight loss. Uh, we mentioned a few things last two weeks ago on, on why it is so important for us to understand and to, to focus on weight loss. But uh, I'm going to add a few more things to what we mentioned last week. But you need to get the web, the um, excuse me, the uh, the DVDs from last week or last two weeks ago, and that'll help to explain, show show you some statistics. But here's another one I found out. This year alone, more than a thousand people will die every single day due to complications caused by being overweight, obese, and out of shape. Think about that. Every single day, more than a thousand people will die due to complications caused by being overweight. So it's of really, really first importance. Again, premature death uh, accounts for over 117 billion dollars incurred by the American government on health care costs. And yet, there's a huge amount of money being spent on advertising for lots of processed foods that will not help you much in terms of uh, health and, and weight gain. So it's very important for us to look away from the hype 
on the TV to look in, into core important information. And I'm here to tell you that that information isn't out there in the open. It's something you need to search for. Uh, again, uh, it's what, looking at fat loss versus weight loss. Uh, you may lose 20 pounds, but if it's the 20 pounds of, of muscle, that you're worse off than you were when you first started. If it's just water, you're still not doing too well. The key is to focus on losing fat, building muscle, and um, enhancing your bone density. And that is what body composition is all about. Now, body composition is those three things. Again, the notes and the DVD from last two weeks is on. Again, the focus, again, is metabolism. If we can get your metabolism raised up, revved, can get it going, then there's a really good chance that a lot of the problems, a lot of the fat and excess weight that you're dealing with will be taken care of. It is not just metabolism, but class, but they found out that the best times that your body has to burn fat is uh, between the wee hours of 4 a.m. and 8 a.m. Between the wee hours of 4 a.m. and 8 a.m. are the best times. Eat too late into the night. Your body doesn't, by the time it's 4 a.m., your body is still struggling with the food that you just had, you've eaten. You're still trying to fat. Your body is trying to deal with the food that is in your intestines, trying to deal with it. And that takes a lot of things that keep, get our met metabolisms revved up and things that hinder or, ha or hamper our metabolisms. So about quite a few things. Um, part one, I, did, I divided this into two parts. I'm not sure we'll be able to do part two, but let's see how, why fat accumulates in the body. Well, let's see, a few questions came from our survey, our polls, saying that, okay, we still don't understand why fat accumulates. Okay, we're going to try and deal with that a little bit more. How fat accumulates. There's why and then there's how. We're going to explain that. Final analysis is not what you understand, but what you do that gets you the results. Okay. And part two, that's what they need to do. They, they know all the keys, the fundamentals, the basics. But they just can't get rest. They don't have good enough support. They uh, they uh, don't know how to do it. And so, uh, to me, this is a very, very important important field. It's it's about understanding how your mind and emotions affect your weight. It's all all about developing strength from the inside out. And that's why I start with your spirit or your religion. There's an aspect, an inner core that is far, like I said, of your um, your background or religion, and what we for core, and then secondly, your mind, how you think, how your emotions act, those two are really what will be responsible for your actions, your decisions, and whether or not you can keep to a plan, whether you can stay or go through, through all that, we'll probably skip it to another webinar. But I just wanted to make that, bring that up for you to understand that it doesn't matter what you know about the first part, how your nervous system works, if you don't if you're not able to maintain and keep keep it up good, much mm -hmm. good at all. So, again, it's about developing strength. Okay, wrote, uh, Dr. Siegel wrote the forward to my book. I don't, I really don't advertise my book on these webinars, but uh, I'm hoping you, when, you, when you go to our website, you'll be able to see that some of you, um, your health, the spiritual, the, the, the emotional, the financial, all those things. Are, and here's what he said for the for for people in on the audio call doctors to describe people who recover from supposedly incurable diseases. However, you ask the person why they didn't die when they were supposed to change their life and started doing what felt right before they died, and the result was that they didn't die. Mm. Wow. And I, I, I experienced this too when I dealt with cancer patients too, and general uh, patients with incurable kind of conditions. It's when people what they need to do. And usually that comes with good information when they get the right kind of information about what they need to do to take. Same thing applies with weight loss, with fat loss, with, um, gaining a healthy body composition change. And really there's, there aren't any two ways about it. Um, if you're not willing to do the work, then there's really not, not, nothing, not, there's no way we can help. Then again, can you ever do that? No, right. I don't think so. You don't think so? Okay, good. Familiar? Right. <laughs> I know. But anyway, um, here's our key slide, our cornerstone slide, and shows that everything in your body is connected and there are three units which control the activities of everything else, including your cardiovascular, your, your, your heart system, and also the fat in your body. Again, uh, I like loss. Uh, if people are so focused on losing fat, on losing weight, and they don't focus on here, on the left side you have your body, how your body functions, um, your, the way your body body has its own wisdom, and your disease, on the other hand, is on, on the right side. 
is not allowed to shine through, or your body was weak, or your body wasn't able to do what it needs to do. That is why disease happens. So, or uh, even excess weight. So, if you can focus on, but if you focus, if you focus on on a bad thing, it grows. If you focus on a good thing, it grows. So, if you focus on weight loss, if you focus on, I'm sorry, in the right way, you will get the answer. So, let's look at, let's see how that works. So, here you see what draw on the disease or maybe the weight. And so, they are given all kinds of the, the new best pill in the world, and it is attacking. And what are those things in the background? Those other mountains. Side effects. Um, go on a medical intervention for for weight loss. They also have side effects. The drugs and other things that we use for weight loss also affect our normal body functioning, and so it weakens us most of our muscles. They chip away at the muscles. So the key is to for body system, strengthening the body system. See that dumbbell? Strengthening the body system so that and deal with excess fat. Mm. And there you have the picture there. So things that deal with specifically with the fat, but if you do just that and you neglect to take and get permanent permanent results. So mm -hmm. it's all about uh, understanding the different systems and ensuring that they're given what they need to, to, to do to function. People are bothered about that. There are about four or five different things. Uh, first, number one, de decrease metabolism. Number two, degree, we're going to talk about that some more. We mentioned that two weeks ago. Number three, decrease in physical activity. And number four, become a vital key nutrient from that digestive tract. And number five, mention genetics. And I'm conceding people try and do everything right, and at the same time, they still gain weight. And that could be due to a problem with their genes or minority. Most times, it is because they didn't do what it took to maintain a healthy weight. Overweight for a long time. As far as long as I know, I've known him, he's like 5'3 and overweight. I mean, he was really heavy, lost a lot of weight now. But that's because he determined to do that. I've never really had that problem because I'm, in, I was trained and I was in the army, and so I've, 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 my muscles have basically developed a great deal from an early age. But what I'm trying to say is that the genes, if it was due to genes, I should be overweight myself, but I'm not. Lifestyle that meant, that is what is responsible for these things. Why do we gain weight? You mentioned the, we mentioned the four things up there: metabolism, just decreased sensitivity, decreased physical activity, decreased absorption, mostly age age related. And I know last time we, we spoke about this, Sherry, you got really upset with me and you interrupted me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, well, of course, I, I asked you to do it anyway. Most of my, <laughs> yeah. so to put some comedic relief there, but uh, the, truth, the truth is that as you grow older, your metabolism, all these um, the things that you take, like uh, smoking, toxins in your, in your food, including pesticides, and lifestyle habits all add to this problem. Now, of course, birth control pills also add to these four problems as we see there. So uh, it is age and lifestyle related. And we're going to show you how that entire thing works. Thanks. Uh, fat metabolism is, uh, glucose metabolism is affected by several different organs in the body. And when glucose metabolism goes awry, Glucose metabolism, what usually results is that fat begins to multiply and to build. And so when it comes to, to ensuring that you don't have, you have um, ample amounts of muscle mass and of fat content, this whole thing plays together. And of course, it came down to the endocrine system. It came down because the endocrine system is what regulates your different body compositions. But um, of the endocrine system, about 19 that are secreted by fat cells alone. About 40 different hormones regulate appetite and weight and fat gain. So I wanted to find the key, the one or two key hormones that actually control everything else. Uh, what came up? One what came up was these two hormones, leptin and insulin, different diseases. We find out that insulin controls even it's in practically every living animal, from worms to the one cell organisms to of course human beings and it all insulin in all these different kinds of organisms oh, that is this number one thing it has several other, other functions too like it regulates several other hormones in the body and so anything that goes wrong with insulin will tend to tip the body out of balance the same thing with leptin leptin was discovered in 1994 and hormone in the body mm. we don't know much about it we don't know much about it but it does they found out that it like insulin it controls a lot of the different hormones and then again you're not sure which is which because each researcher claims that what he's focusing on or what he's studying is what is the most important right. uh, for instance the guy who um, the guy up there in Reading who, who wrote the book perfect balance he believes that estradiol the, the estrogen hormone it has about 
300 different functions. He believes that that is a very, very one of the most important hormones in the body. So, but when it comes to fat loss, keep a pen. So we're going to focus on these two. All right, let's talk about insulin. Again, I showed you this picture last week. Insulin is what helps the glucose. That's the glucose there move into the cell. So you have glucose, you have the insulin molecule. Without the insulin molecule, glucose will not move into the cell. The only exception is in the brain. The brain does not need insulin. Only use glucose for energy production. All other cells in the body have, can use different, they can use glucose, they can use some fat, they can use proteins. Um, the brain has to have glucose. Okay, what David, happens? Yeah. Just a quick, um, just remember that there's about a 10 second delay when you refer to a slide and when we see it. Oh, really? Okay, all right. Yeah, that's right. Oh, 10 seconds, that's a long time. You mean one second, right? Or two seconds? Well, just a few. Just keep it in mind. All right, I'll change it now. Tell me when you get it, when you see it. Do you see it? Not yet. Do you see the, the cells? Not yet. What do you see now? Insulin resistance. Oh, you're kidding. There, okay. now you see it. Now you see it. Oh, yeah. my gosh. So that's, that's a long time. There's a, a, just a slight delay, so. Well, that's, that's more than a slight delay. Hmm. Okay, all right. Uh, all right. So let's, let's see. I need to watch out for that. All right. Here again, insulin resistance. We're not going to dwell too much on this. But when there's insulin resistance, the glucose cannot get into the cells. And so these insulin molecules do not act the way they should. And so you have a lot of glucose in the bloodstream, which, of course, is mainly in a problem called diabetes. But in addition, there's a lot of insulin in the bloodstream because insulin isn't doing its work, and the brain, and the brain it keeps on sending messages to the pancreas to pour out more insulin, pour out more insulin, because the cells are crying out for glucose, and glucose gets in only with insulin, and so the brain is like saying, pour out more insulin, and so you have a lot of condition called hyperinsulinemia. Hyperinsulinemia uh, simply means that there's too much insulin in the body. Now, let's see how that works. Are you seeing the next slide now? Not yet. I'll tell you when I do. Okay. Okay, in, in we hyper... Huh? We see it now. Now, good. So, so you see normal glucose metabolism, right? Yes, I love your drawing. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Uh, when it comes to glucose metabolism, insulin, like we said, helps to drive the 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 glucose into the cells. Now, most of what insulin, uh, most of what, uh, what's, what's I going to say? Most of what, most of the cells that insulin drives glucose into. Uh, the muscles and in the fat cells, they account for over two-thirds of all the glucose that is taken up into, into the body, two-thirds, and the rest, the rest are divided up into the other trillion or so, several trillion cells. Now, here are some key things. I want to try and explain carefully why it so happens that fat seems to be deposited more. Uh, there, there's fat accumulation. Here's what happens. If there's enough glucose and your endocrine system and your body is working well. What happens is that, first of all, glucose is insulin causes the storage of glucose in the liver. Then it goes to the, the muscles, which of course is the, um, the, the more active you are, obviously, the more glucose is going to go into your cells or the more glucose you need. So the body will take up glucose or the muscles will take up glucose. And then it also goes into the fat cells. Here's the problem. When there's insulin resistance, in, in other words, the cells are not taking up insulin, insulin resistance starts, first of all, with the liver. Mm. Then it starts, then it goes to the muscle, but the least resistance to insulin is fat. Mm. What does that mean? What does that mean? Well, when insulin stores, muscle in the, or stores glucose in the liver, it stores it as glycogen. That's not a problem. When insulin works on the muscle, it stores it as, uh, as something like glucose, okay, or glycogen. But in the fat, it doesn't store it as glucose or glycogen. It actually converts it to triglycerides or fat. And that is what begins to accumulate. Again, insulin is, is um, the fat cells are least resistant 
So once you, as you get older and older and older, and this is the normal course of aging, you become more insulin, more and more insulin resistant. And insulin resistance affects resistant is the fat tissue. And so fat is insulin by default. You can see how these arrows kind of, uh, they're blocked here. It's, it's, it's these um, red by default, they decide the, the glucose decides to go to the fat tissue instead of the muscle and the liver. Make sense? Yeah. Hmm. So, so, so again, that, that's exactly right. The fat tissue is the path of least resistance. Now, why is this so? I have no idea. Why? I mean, why do we have to have due to an imbalance in the way the body is meant to function? And again, that happens more with age, but also if you have lifestyles that further compound it, like smoking and drinking and not pushing no stress, causes rapid fat accumulation, and of course causes insulin resistance too. All right. So it kind of makes sense. Yeah. So what? So what's the connection between leptin levels and fat stores? We showed you this picture last last week too. You have more fat, you have more leptin, and too much fat means your leptin levels are high. It gets to a point when high leptin is perceived by the brain as normal, and so the brain now begins to say, "Okay, we um, this amount of fat in the body because the leptin levels indicate to the brain." what the amount of fat, is, what the fat levels are. So if you have fat levels of 80%, you have leptin levels of 8 on a scale to 10, your brain thinks over a period of time when you've been, you've been um, mentioned all those other stresses, your brain thinks that a level of 8 of fat is good for you. And so when you want to lose weight, when you decide to start exerting discipline and your leptin level falls from an 8 to a 7, your brain thinks, uh-oh, we're going to starvation. And this is where the tripti gene that Dr. Newton talks about comes into play. Your brain thinks you're going into starvation and all of a sudden forces you to, to start eating again. And so eventually you have a lot of, of you're your fat, you're upset, you're hot, you're hot, and very discouraged and depressed. You can see that, you can see the connection between the two. Insulin resistance, insulin causes fat accumulation. Actually, insulin resistance leads to leptin resistance. Again, why, why, why is that so? Because insulin actively causes the creation of fat. When fat levels go higher, leptin levels go higher. And eventually, leptin levels cause the brain, high leptin levels cause the brain to, to reset and say, this is, my, this is the amount of fat that is good for me. It only goes wrong. It thinks that this level of eight as opposed to a level of, say, five of leptin levels is good. And so the brain begins to enforce a leptin level of eight, which would mean a high fat level in the body. I hope this isn't, this isn't getting too confusing. No, it's, it's good. Okay. So um, getting back to our, our point, the two main hormones with regards to fat gain and fat loss are insulin and leptin. And here's how, here's the, the, the area they work. Leptin resistance occurs in the brain. Again, like we mentioned, the brain the leptin level as an indicator of how much fat in the body. Insulin resistance occurs in the rest of the body, especially in the rest of the body. So when, when the liver and the muscles are resistant to insulin, the fat cells are not. And so by default, by the path of least resistance, fat begins to accumulate. And this accumulation of fat depends on the sex. I'll give you an example. Men, fat tends to accumulate in the gut, in the bowels the abdominal region. That's why men have pot bellies. For women, the fat accumulates in the hips and the thighs. That's why that's why women have, and part of it is because women are based are uh, um, designed to have big hips, and part of that is for um, childbearing and child delivery. Okay. So, what is the problem with? Did you? Are you seeing the yo-yo dieting thing now? Not yet. There oh we my. go. There, we, we just thought. Okay. So what is the problem with yo-yo dieting? That, that simply means you diet today, um, you, you get discipline for about two months, and then you back off, and then for five, six months, you do whatever you want to do, then you get back into it, and then up and down, up and down, up and down. The irony is this. And again, I'm so, I, I just don't understand why our bodies are made this way. But here's, here's the thing. When you begin to lose weight, when you begin to diet, let's say you go on this wonderful diet and you, you've heard great things, of, great things about, 
you begin to you, you cut back on certain nutrients, you take more of certain nutrients. What happens is that first of all you, you lose water and then you begin to use up your stores, especially if you're fasting, if part of the diet is there, you're fasting. You begin to lose up your stores in the liver and in the muscle. They, some, some stores of glucose are stored in the liver and the muscle. But it doesn't, there's a lot of storage in the fat. Why the body doesn't use up the fat cells, I don't understand. One of the reasons they say is because the fat cells are very difficult to metabolize. So again, the path of least resistance comes into play. The body uses up the stores in the liver first. If that's not enough, it begins to use up stores in the, in the muscles. It then eventually begins, when the stores are depleted, it begins to burn, actively burn muscle to get the nutrients that it needs. Again, this is especially when you're fasting or you're really, really, really restricting your diet. It begins mm -hmm. to burn muscles. Finally, when, muscle, when, when the muscle level has reached a level that, oh, this is not compatible with health and the person may get sick, then the body finally decides to go after the fat. So the fat is the last thing the body goes after to burn fuel. And yet, it's the first thing that it goes after when there's, in when there's insulin resistance. It's easiest for the body to store fat, to store glucose as fat, but it is the most difficult for the body to take glucose out of fat. Hmm. Again, I, I, I we're still trying to figure out why why that is why why it works that way. Pounds. If you lose twenty pounds of of, uh, of 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 your body weight, the body in trying to reach that weight again, the body begins to deposit fat to make up for the weight you've lost. Mm. So if you, if you lost twenty pounds of of, of body weight and um, ten pounds of it is muscle and ten pounds of it is fat. When it's all said and done, you've actually replaced it with 15 pounds of fat wow. and like 5% five, five of muscle. So everything is working against you once you, want, once you go by certain types of diets. The key, again, is not to focus on the disease or the problem of obesity. You need to, first of all, focus on getting your body back into rhythm, getting your body back into gear. And again, I have the four principles. We had this up from our first class. And it's what I call the four fundamentals of heavy living. Number one, a happy, focused, and productive mind. That saves and protects you from stress. Stress accumulates fat in the body like nothing else. Number two, a healthy diet of wholesome foods plus nutritional supplementation. If you think you're going to get all the nutrients that you need by taking a balanced diet, you are kidding yourself. It is not going to happen. You must supplements with good quality nutritional supplements. Number three, a proactive approach to healthy living. Of course, that means exercise, that means lifestyle changes if you are doing things that are harmful to your body. Smoking, again, helps to, uh, uh, if it puts, it puts stress on your body, puts toxins in your body, and toxins are a breeding ground for fat. Number four, an intelligent co collaboration with the healthcare system. The healthcare system is very important. I would never say anything against them. Um, but doesn't just abrogate and just give your entire authority over your body to um, a healthcare professional and let him do what he, what he wants to do. You have to be the one to ask questions. And of course, you can't ask questions if you don't, if you don't know something or you don't know what questions to ask. So you have to be uh, empowered with information. All right, let's go on. Need to, first of all, let's touch on the nutrients that you need. Um, very, very important. There are about seven different nutrients that, that are essential for for optimal health. Now, with regards to fat loss, with about fats and metabolism, essential vitamins. I've mentioned the vitamin B complex, especially pantothenic acid, which is vitamin B5. Very, very important for metabolism of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Very, very important. Of course, vitamin B12 is good for, for um, energy. Of the minerals, the most important for, for, weight, for weight and for carbohydrate metabolism are chromium. Chromium works to create insulin, helps in the production of insulin, insulin, and helps insulin work better. So it helps with insulin resistance. Helps insulin work better and helps to um, create insulin. Very, very important. The other magnesium is also extremely important for the metabolism of glucose. Zinc is a third mineral I want to mention. Zinc is very important for thyroid function. The thyroid gland 
is very needs zinc to do and create thyroid hormones and for the thyroid hormones to work well. Of course, zinc is the most important Im uh, mineral for your immune system. It's the most important mineral for your immune system. On average, uh, we need 15 milligrams of, of zinc a day for healthy for a healthy balance. Uh, a non-functioning immune system will predispose to fat problems too. Uh, essential amino acids. I'm going to mention this real quick. Serotonin is a neurotransmitter in the brain that help, that tells you when you're satisfied, when you're no longer hungry. We find out that obese people have very low levels of serotonin. Serotonin is also what protects you from depression. What happens when, when you're depressed? You eat more, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, as most people I know, when they're depressed, they tend to crave comfort foods, so they call them. So serotonin is what helps to tell your brain that you're satisfied and also to helps to tell your brain uh, and helps to relieve depression. Very, very important neurotransmitters. Also, also is dopamine, very, very important for the brain. Now, tryptophan is an amino acid that helps to um, um, ensure that you have enough serotonin. It's, it's the main key nutrient in serotonin. It's what helps to build serotonin. So you need essential amino acids, but also you need tryptophan. That's one thing you want to look out for. Now, what drugs do is that drugs um, manipulate the serotonin balance. That's what Prozac and other drugs like that treat depression. They help to, to manipulate the serotonin balance. The unfortunate thing is that this also affects other systems in the body that have nothing to do with the nervous system and cells that have nothing to do with depression. And so that is the side effect you get from using drugs. But if you build enough, if you give your body enough, if you, um, if you help to re-regulate the endocrine system using amino acids, because most, um, the largest proportion of hormones are actually made of amino acids. So um, if you give enough amino acids on proteins in your body, Hopefully that should take care of, care of some of the problems that deal with depression and satiety, satiety, satiety. All right, uh, David, essential. I mean, yeah. Before before you move on, because uh, there's a lot of people taking notes, would you okay. just go through each of those again, the vitamins, minerals, amino acids, and just give us the list again, like chromium, zinc. Okay. Just so for those who are taking notes. Okay. Starting from number one, water is, is very important. Um, if if you if your water is diminished, if you don't, if you're not well hydrated, the, um, the Bible. <laughs> if you're not well hydrated, they find out that your metabolism slows by two percent. If you're not if you're just not being hydrated again, your metabolism slows by two percent. So very important. Essential vitamins. Uh, most important are vitamin B5, called pantothenic acid. Vitamin B complex. Very good. Very important for metabolism. Essential minerals, zinc and magnesium for carbohydrate metabolism. No, I got that wrong. I'm sorry. Zinc and chromium for carbohydrate metabolism. That's it. Well, chromium and magnesium. Did I say magnesium and chromium? Did I say that right? I don't know. Just say it, just say it right now, and then we'll, we'll get it. It is magnesium and chromium. Oh, we're going to send these out in the notes. I can hear everybody erasing in cyber zone. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm, I'm low on, on glucose, I think, myself. Uh, okay. Magnesium and chromium are essential for carbohydrate metabolism. Zinc is essential for thyroid hormone function. Now, remember, thyroid is a key hormone. It helps to... to, to uh, Raise your metabolism or slow down your metabolism. 60% uh, of all people in the United States are hypothyroid. So therefore, 60% of people have a lower metabolism. Um, so zinc is very important. Um, essential amino acids. Tryptophan is one of the essential amino acids. It is key in the production of serotonin, which is a neurotransmitter in the brain. It's a chemical in the brain that tells your brain when you're full and tells your brain uh, or protects your, your brain from depression. All right. I'm switching over now. When do you see it? We see it now. Five, six, seven? Yes. Okay. Well, so that works fast. All right. Essential amino acids. It's essential fatty acids for cell regulation. Remember, the, the cell membrane, which is the brain of the cell, is made up primarily of amino, of fatty acids, excuse me, fatty acids. 
of course, it's made up of carbohydrates and proteins too, but that sheet, that, that wrapping around the, the cell is made up primarily of fatty acids. Very important. It's the brain. 60% of the solid weight of your brain is made up of fat. So if your brain isn't functioning very well, then you can forget about any other system functioning very well. So therefore, extremely important um, of, of the fatty acids, omega-3s are the most important. Um, in your notes, I'm going to show you where to get omega-3s from. Um, in the food, of course, and in the types of food that omega-3s are, are found in. A quick note here, they found out in Asian communities where, you, where they eat a lot of fish, it's Japan, some islands in Japan and China, they have the least amount of depression mm. because fatty acids help to protect the brain. Omega-3s, again, are the most important fatty acids for brain function. Uh, sugars and glyconutrients, we just can't talk about fat loss without talking about glyconutrients, sugars, cell-to-cell uh, -cell communication and immune support. That may not mean so much to most people, but for your cells, and there's a whole class on that. We're, we're probably going to have to do another class on glyconutrients, but there's a whole uh, information, a whole a tremendous amount of information being done all over, and research being done all over the world on how sugars and glyconutrients help your body, help the 60 plus trillion cells in your body function well, burn fat, re-regulate your endocrine system, uh, re-regulate your immune system, just helps to set things right. You cannot, you cannot omit sugars, and I'm not talking about glucose, I'm talking about the eight sugars, glucose included, but also talking about things like beta-glucan, um, some, some of these uh, uh, mushrooms and herbs around the world. If I that the us to the next point, phytochemicals. Phytochemicals are they are they are, they are plant chemicals that are not really essential for the structure of, and function of the cells as much as they are for protection and detoxification. Different cultures around the world have their super plants or their hero plants that they use uh, for all kinds of health problems. So quick examples, the Japanese and the Chinese use reishi or reiki, it's called the red mushroom. It used to be, in, in ancient times, it used to be more important than gold because of its beneficial effects. It also has glyconutrients and other, other phytochemicals. Um, the Indians, East Indians, use the amal amaliki fruit and also turmeric, turmeric, which are very, very important. They found that they have so many health benefits. The um, who, who else is out there? Um, um, Chinese use ginseng and ginkgo biloba. Very important for brain function. So different cultures. And of course, the good old French have their good old red wine, which mm -hmm. them from heart disease. So we have different cultures around the world that um, use different phytochemicals that are extremely important for detoxification. We, in Nigeria, we have a plant that helps protect um, in, in the healing of malaria. And malaria is the number one killer in the world. So there's a, there are plants that we use, we drink, we, we breathe in, we inhale the, the fumes from it, and some, somehow helps to, helps to overcome uh, malaria. So again, these are the nutrients essential for optimal health. You've got to have enough of it. I don't think you can have too much. I think once you have the basic fundam fundamentals down, you want to have, you, um, it's going to help keep you healthy. And again, once you're healthy, you, your body is, back in balance and your body will burn fat. Once your body is in balance, once your endocrine system is in balance, it will, as a natural resort, burn fat. It is the reason people accumulate fat is because their bodies are not in balance. The key is to maintain that balance. Of course, food, food to avoid, we don't have to talk too much about that, processed foods as much as possible, um, sweets, the, the, three, the three whites, white sugar, white flour, and white rice, if you can. But to me, in my estimation, it's much more important to put the good stuff in. Once you have enough of the good stuff, you don't have to worry too much about the bad stuff. Okay, specifics. We've talked about the generals. We gave you the four bases, and we talked about nutrition. Specifics, what you can do when you have excess fat. Now, again, you must, have, you must be doing the other things to a sufficiently efficient way. The, the other basic things. The next things are the specific things you need to watch out for. Watch your appetite. Um, 
the conflicting views. Some people say eat as many times a day, like eat every three hours. And that's the reason they give for that is that you, uh, it helps to keep your me your metabolism at a high level. Some people say that's baloney. <laughs> researchers, some of the researchers say that's baloney. Base your meals, have three meals a day, and don't eat after 6 or 7 p.m. Uh, and the reason for they're given for that is because, like I said earlier, four, between 4 a.m. and 8 a.m. is your body's best time it burns fat. So um, the less food there is, and the, uh, the researcher in this particular instance said leave about 11 to 12 hours before your, your next meal in the morning. So hopefully you should have eaten at about 6 or 7 p.m. and don't eat anything again until about 8 a.m. the next morning. That gives your body um, its rest, your digestive tract, and helps your body focus on burning fat as opposed to di focusing on expending energy to di digest the food that is in the gut. So uh, again, there are so many different views about that, but this second part seems to make sense to me. Okay, mm -hmm. hydrate. We mentioned hydration. Uh, support the nervous system. Yeah, we mentioned that a little bit. 95% of people are actually deficient in fatty acids. 95% of people are deficient in fatty acids. Well, why is that important? Again, 6% of your brain's weight, solid weight, is made up of fatty acids. If you don't have enough fatty acids, your brain just doesn't work well. All right, um, again, balance. That's a key theme here. Key theme with fat loss is balance. Reestablish balance in homeostasis. Build muscle, very important to remember. Testosterone diminishes in the in in both men and women, but more in women. Uh, the way you, testosterone is what helps to to build muscle. Muscle burns um, uses energy uh, three to five times more than fat does, and so it keeps. So when you have enough muscle, you are using up the glucose, and therefore, yeah. First of all. You're decreasing insulin sensitivity. When you build muscle, strong muscles are not insulin insulin resistant. It is weak muscles, muscles that aren't doing anything that are insulin resistant. So once you build muscle, you're going to be you have a greater chance to burn the excess fat in your body. More muscle, more fat burning. As a matter of fact, many many researchers, many writers say this is probably the most important one. You can build muscle. If you, uh, Part of that, you're going to, probably going to need to hire a trainer if you can afford it who can help you build muscle. And and it doesn't have to be that much. It's not like you're going to carry huge dumbbells, just things that help your muscles strain. Mm -hmm. And uh, that will help you build, help you burn fat. Care for the digestive tract. We're going to treat that a little bit. Detoxify. We mentioned we had a class on detoxification and um, how your body defends itself. Key things are with the liver and your digestive tract. If you can, um, and of course your blood, your, your bloodstream, getting chemicals, getting heavy metals, getting toxins out of the body. Toxins are a very good fo focus for the buildup of fat. What the body does tries to do, if it cannot el eliminate toxins, is that the, the next best thing it does is to cover it up, is to sheath, form a sheath around it, so that the toxins don't negatively affect other cells in the body. And the sheath that they build around that toxin is fat. Mm. Okay, again, there's a picture. Uh, you see nervous system support. Do you see nervous system support? Yes, just now saw it. Okay. Do you see human brain? Not yet. See the picture? It's some, yeah, now we see it. Sometimes it's really quick and sometimes there's this, a bit of a delay. I'm not sure why. But now we see the human brain. Okay. Care of the human brain. We're going to make our next class on Saturday is on the human brain. And there's a picture of it. Probably just skip through this. Uh, let's talk about reestablishing proper endocrine balance. See a picture of the endocrine system? Uh, Re-establishing proper endocrine balance. That's what we see. Okay. Now we see the system. Okay. All right. Well, 
the most important uh, hormones that we, we, we have to remember are, of course, leptin and insulin. They, uh, they will, once, they, once you can reduce the leptin amounts, once you can reduce insulin amounts, and that comes really from resetting that quote-unquote thermostat up in your brain. That's why the class, the other, the third class I want to come to, we can't get to it today, but the third class deals with resetting, developing that strength from within to enable you shun food, shun your appetite, um, develop the discipline necessary, necessary to keep your food intake at a minimum to enable you to build muscle, to go to the gym when you need to, to take the right nutrients. All those things will come when, uh, yeah, when, like I said, that de de developing that faith, developing that good the picture, the goal of the, the target which you have, all those things will come from really mental and spiritual training. Mm -hmm. That helps a lot. I remember with Oprah, and I mentioned this two weeks ago, Oprah had, had done her yo-yo diet on and off, on and off for a very long time until she found the right coach who could help her spiritually and emotionally as well as give her the nutritional and uh, the training advice for helping her build muscles. And it was only then and then that she was now able to maintain. I mean, she's not like she's this universe yet. I don't think she'll ever get there. But she's been able, she has been able to lose and keep off a good amount of, a good amount of body fat. Yeah. So, well, David, I, yeah. I, that is one of the things I very much appreciate that, that you do give us that bigger picture approach because I can probably speak for some of the females on this, our, the, what our society, how it pushes females to look a certain way, it, it forces you to, not forces you, but influences you to try to do some of those quick things, to lose five pounds now. And, right, right. Uh, you just get caught in this trap of thinking that's what's expected of you. And so right. I personally find it very refreshing to say, quit looking at the scale every other day day and focus on general health and it, once you are healthy some of those things will take care of themselves. So that is I true. appreciate that, that female. <laughs> <laughs> well thank you, thanks for bringing that up. And as you were talking you, you, something else came to mind too. Um, it's, we were mentioning the weight the, the weight gain category but there are lots of people like you just mentioned who, who who are so desperate to lose weight that they become anorexics mm -hmm. and they just they, they starve themselves and they starve themselves and their body begins to turn on muscle and, and, and destroy itself because they in their minds again back to the mind back to the spirit in their minds and their spirits they think that they are fat even though they're like five six and 95 pounds mm -hmm. Or maybe no, that maybe 60, 70 pounds. Maybe they're like five, six, and they're 70 pounds, and they still think that they are overweight, and so they just continue tormenting and harassing their bodies. And so again, it, 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 their, their self-image and the way they see themselves is warped, and mm -hmm. that turns everything else against them: the endocrine system, the digestive system, the pancreas, and the liver. It just, it just warps the entire system. So very, very important. All right, building iron pump. Uh, let's talk about pumping iron. That was Arnold Schwarzenegger's documentary movie. I never saw that. But when it comes to muscle mass, you see the, the, the graph? Not yet. Okay. When it comes to muscle mass. Now we see it. Good. The yellow stands for for the... In the male, how testosterone testosterone is uh, the levels how they fluctuate throughout life. Remember, at the age of 20, early 20s is when the testosterone is at, is at the highest. Also, uh, the green is for women. The estrogen is their dominant dominant hormone, and you can see that estrogen peaks uh, are between the ages of 20 and. 35 or maybe close to 40. That's where the, those are the reproductive years, the best reproductive years. And estrogen again is responsible for oh, some some level of mus of, of fat burning, but also bone density. You can see compared to the the males, estrogen 
the dominant hormone in, in females diminishes to a very low level from your 50s onwards. It, for men, the testosterone, we're, we're luckier because uh, testosterone still stays at a higher level even till later years. And so, again, I mentioned last time that testosterone can actually be, be converted to estrogen or the estradiol, which is very, very important for brain function. So we are protected a lot from some of the the, the problems that can, that can ensue with um, fat, fat gain as opposed to, to ladies. So you're at a disadvantage, unfortunately. But the idea is not to beat you over the head, ladies over the head with it. The idea is for you to see what you have to, you're have you you're up against and for you to make intelligent decisions about it. And some of those things we talked about earlier on. Again, uh, testosterone levels in ladies is half what it was when you're 40. It's half what it was when you were 20. And and even uh, for the, when you when we come to 50, it's half what, you, what it was when you were 40. So it continues to diminish. Again, testosterone is what helps to build muscle. Muscle is what helps to burn fat. Mm. Digestive system. Digestive system. Let's talk about how the digestive system works and what we need to do to keep it healthy. Why is the digestive system so important? Well, part of it is because 70% of your immune system is in the digestive system. It's in specifically. It's in the colon and the gut. So if your if your gut is healthy, if your gut is working well, then you're going to have uh, hopefully a good strong immune system. But also you're going to be able to absorb the nutrients that you need. What we find out is that um, digestive function is maximum again in your teens to early twenties. Twenties, you've got lots of um, the the juices, the enzymes are working very very well. But when you get to be thirty and forty and fifty and onwards. The digestive systems, the the juices, the digestive enzymes, the probiotics all diminish as the years go by. Therefore, you don't digest food like you should. You don't absorb food food as much as you would when you were in your teens, and you don't make use of the food as much as you, you did when you were a child. So it's very, very important to know again what you're up against and what you need to do to help correct the balance. And there are three years. Go ahead. Quick question. So if you're not absorbing the nutrients as well, does your body think it's hungrier and yes. send that message to eat more, eat more, because you're not getting the nutrients because you're not absorbing them? Point. Very, very good point. That's exactly what happens. You know, you know, get, your brain keeps on saying, eat more, eat more, I'm not getting what I need, and so it just keeps getting fat. And that's another thing with these people who are overweight. Um, they eat junk food. Um, some, some, some many of them do eat junk food, and the brain is like, "Okay, I'm getting food, but I'm not getting the right kind of food." So maybe, it's, but there is some of it inside that junk food. So if you're going to eat, keep on eating junk food, then eat more of it, so at least I can get the right amount out of that junk food. So they keep on going to eat more and more and more, and of course, part of the chemicals that are put in the junk food and the burgers themselves uh, actually stimulate your brain to eat more too. So not all calories are created equal. No, not all calories are created equal. Not at all. And uh, yes, I, speaking about calories, uh, the glycemic in, index, and strongly encourage you to to look into the GKCC um, health coaching because they, Dr. Nugent and Wendy Nugent, talk a lot about how to intelligently eat um, the right kinds of foods, the right kind of uh, foods that will reduce the glycemic load on your body. And also, they talk about your glycemic type or your nutritional type. And the more you know about the specifics, the better. The more you know, the better. Okay, lots of hydration for digestive tract. The more water in your, in your gut, the more you're able to flush out uh, bad stuff. Stay away f as much as you can from sodas and from coffee and tea and the rest. You, your body only absorbs 50% of the water in the coffee, tea, and sodas as it would from the rest from regular water, regular water. It's easier for your body to take, it takes, the body takes 100% of the water you take in, but if it's in coffee and soda and the others, it doesn't, it takes about 50%. Fiber, very, very important. Fiber, why is fiber important? It provides bulk to push the, the, the food and the toxins that are left behind through your gut and quickly, and quickly get them out into the open. If you don't have enough fiber in your diet, I remember some cultures have a lot of fiber in their diet, and they, because they have so much fiber, they, they don't have certain conditions like colorectal cancer, for instance. Um, research suggests 
and I'm using that word lightly, but research actually over and over and over confirms, that's a better word, that fiber can help protect from colorectal cancer. Mm. So the more fiber you can have, um, again, well, another thing that fiber does is that it slows absorption of calories, of carbohydrates, of sugars. If you have fiber, it kind of holds it down. So um, some foods, when you eat them, your blood sugar just spikes automatically. When the blood sugar spikes, insulin levels spike. And you don't want that because when insulin levels are on a yo-yo level, when insulin levels spike and go down, spike and go down, it can predispose to uh, fatigue in the pancreas. The pancreas will eventually run out of energy to create insulin. And not only that, it can cause insulin resistance. Insulin resistance causes leptin resistance. Leptin resistance and insulin resistance combined cause fat accumulation. Mm. You don't want that. Fatty acids. Remember, uh, fatty acids very, very important um, for to help the liver. Uh, it takes fat really to burn fat. It takes the right kind of fat to burn the wrong kind of fat. Mm. Fatty acids like like omegas help to reduce the uh, bad cholesterol and bad fat. So the, the liver needs fatty acids to to do what it needs to do to burn excess fat and to metabolize excess fat and toxins. Just want to mention tips for eating. Uh, again, there are different conflicting views. Three times a day, some people, some people say every three hours. Bottom line, when you eat, just make sure you put good stuff in your body. Uh, we mentioned glycemic indexing. Get, a, get help. Get a coach, folks. Um, support, social support can be such a tremendous benefit. You can get someone who you can be uh, responsible to, you can be accountable to. It helps so much better up you to, um, you know, Jenny Ferns. Do you know what, do you know what coach, uh, what coding system Jenny Ferns recommends? What, ask uh, that question again. Jenny Ferns, the, the lady from Canada, she mentioned, a, and she's with a, a coaching system. Um, yeah, health coaching. We'll, we'll probably have to just include that information in our next email. Yeah, the notes. Okay, health coaching. Yeah, something. There's a health coaching for, um, firm that is really helping to really. Um, they can work with you one-on-one, -on -one, online, and they can help you to uh, motivate you to do what you need to do to build muscle, to walk, to eat the right foods. Look for help. That's what I say. It's very important. My favorite quote. One of my favorite quotes. Health is a large word. It embraces not the body only, but the mind and the spirit as well. Not today's pain and pleasure alone, but the whole being and outlook of man. James H. West, once you grasp this, once you understand this, then weight loss ceases to be a mystery. Mm. Resources. Okay, we mentioned some of these last time. Robert Greene, he's an endocrine expert, and he focuses on women's issues a lot. I think this book is a really, really good book when he talks about hormonal balance and the sex hormones and what you need to do to stay on top of things, including fat loss. The Fat Flush Plan, I mentioned this last time. I think this was very, very well done. Are you seeing this? Are you seeing the screen? Fat uh, flush. Seeing, okay, we just saw fat flush. Okay, golly, this is this is, low, is this uh, how it has always been. It's it's sporadic. It. I mean, for our last our last webinar. Uh, it does seem a little bit sluggish today. Okay. Uh, you on a diet? What one of the things? Uh, this is by Dr. Oz. One of the things they mention in in this book is that uh, don't look at the scale, look at your your belt size. This is probably for the men as well as for the women, the, the waistline. It's it's a better it's a it's a better indicator of of your progress. Because again fat accumulates around those, those areas. Maybe your hip line for ladies and fat accumulates there. So if it's reducing it means that you're losing fat. You may not be losing weight, but you're losing fat. And fat loss is the key as opposed to just ordinary weight loss. Oprah. This 
is a DVD, DVD set, 20-year uh, anniversary, um, wonderful stories about people who have lost tremendous amounts of weight. Uh, one of the records I've seen is a guy who's like six foot eight. He lost over 500 pounds, oh. and, he has, and that was through diet and exercise alone, and he has kept it off. So it is possible. People need stories. They need encouragement, and one of the one of the good ways to do that is by watching and seeing how other people have done it. All right. Well, um, I'm going to pause for now. If we have any questions, we can go over that, and then we'll just round up. How about that? Okay. Um, so, if you have a question, you it was very clear what you spoke about today because we didn't have near the questions we do sometimes. Uh, let's see. There is a question though about. If natural insulin is a tool for getting glucose into our cells and glyconutrients help the body to repair and produce the receptors, how does the man-made insulin that diabetics have to take, like from a needle, how does that work? Well, it's, it's, it, it works very much the same way, maybe not as effectively. But um, it, bottom line, what insulin does is that it helps the glucose get into the body. Um, I'm not sure if this person is asking on a specific basis. Maybe you might need to rephrase that question. Yeah, I, I just was wondering if there, my interpretation was they're wondering if there's a difference between uh, man-made insulin and what your body makes and how your body deals with it and the importance of the receptors for it. Well, there's, there's always there's always a difference between um, what your body makes and what is man man made. Now, granted, um, technology is getting to such a degree where it's, it's, what they produce is very very close to what your body actually makes, but uh, there might be some biochemical differences. Um, they work the same way at the receptor level. Okay. The, right. the, uh, the problem, again, to look out for with man-made insulin is that you can, you can tip your body into a too much insulin. And so what you need to do is not focus as much on insulin, but it's on, to focus on helping your body um, develop the sensitivity. The reason why they give, the reason they're given insulin, if you, are, if you are not a type 1 diabetic now, if you're not a type 1 diabetic, type 1 diabetic means your, your body, is, your pancreas is producing no insulin, therefore you must receive insulin from an external source. But if you're a type 2 di diabetic, the body, it means your body has, a, has too much insulin for the most part. And that's causing damage to your other your tissues. And so when people give you, when you get more insulin in addition to what your body is producing, then um, you might have a, 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 other kinds of trouble. Now you might still, you still need it, but um, what you can do is um, ensure that your body is more sensitive to insulin. Okay, great. Uh, well, I think that is, been great information, David. Thank you for all of that. I just as we wrap up too, because I again we apologize for having everybody muted at the beginning. We were doing a couple of announcements and telling you guys a few things, and had you completely muted, you didn't hear a word we said. But um, one thing was that we were just thanking you for your patience while we're switching from um, different softwares we're using for different things, and just encourage you guys if. If you're having any questions or problems downloading something, do not hesitate to email us. It's our goal to serve you with excellence, and so please stay in touch with us. Great stuff. Well, folks, uh, you have a great day, and remember, knowledge, information, keep searching. It's really, uh, that is your protection against the stresses and problems of this life. And thank you again, Sherry, for helping us out. Have a great week. Bye.